Good morning everyone! Welcome back to our MELC session for the same subject, General Chemistry 1. But for this discussion, we will now move on to week 2 of the said subject. Again, this is Mom Dolor Armaniques of Don Carlos M. Diaz Memorial National High School, Senior High School Department. So, our most essential learning competency for General Chemistry 1, week 2, will be recognize common isotopes and their uses. So, our learning objectives for this most essential learning competency is to pinpoint the most common isotopes and our second learning competency is explain the uses of those common isotopes. To start with, let's take a look or let's have a quick review of what is an isotope. So class isotopes pertain to atoms of an element having the same atomic number but different mass number. Okay, so don't be confused class. Atomic number is different from a mass number. All right, so the existence of isotopes was shown by mass spectroscopy experiments wherein elements were found to be composed of several types of atoms, each with different masses. We know that the atomic number identifies an element. The atoms of isotopes of an element have the same number of protons, that is the subatomic particle, which is positively charged, and electrons, the negatively charged subatomic particle. Also, we know that the atoms of isotopes of an element differ in the number of neutrons. Okay, take for instance the first element in the periodic table, which is letter H, hydrogen. The common isotopes for hydrogen atom is, we have three of the most common. We have protium, also we have deuterium, and tritium. So we have to expound further on these three most common isotopes of hydrogen. So protium is the most prevalent isotope with an abundance of 99.98%. It consists of one proton and one electron. It is typically not found in its monoatomic form but bonded with itself for other element. It contains the active substance pantoprazole. Prutchong is a selective proton pump inhibitor. So, in the field of medicine, proton pump inhibitor, like prutchong, is very useful in the sense that it reduces the amount of acid produced in our stomach. It is used for treating acid-related diseases of the stomach and the intestines. So, that's, uh, cert that's uh, the good-to-know uh, concepts or ideas about Prutchum. Let's proceed to the next isotope of hydrogen, which is called deuterium. Deuterium is a hydrogen isotope consisting of one proton, one neutron, and one electron. It occurs in trace amounts naturally as deuterium gas. It has major application in nuclear magnetic resonance studies. Third, we have tritium. Tritium is a hydrogen isotope consisting of one proton, two neutrons, and one electron. It is radioactive with a half-life of 12.32 years. It is also used as radioactive tracer in radioluminescent light sources for watches and instruments and along with deuterium as a fuel for nuclear fusion reactions with applications in energy generations and weapons. All right, so those are the three most common isotopes for the element hydrogen. Okay, another element class which we're going to study is carbon. Alright, so everyone is just like hydrogen, 
everyone is well uh, aware, well accustomed with this element, carbon. Okay, so um, we have three isotopes found in nature uh, in the isotopes of carbon. So we have carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14, respectively. So unlike um, hydrogen isotopes earlier, which had a different name, not hydrogen-1 or hydrogen-2 or hydrogen-3, this time, carbon isotopes is represented by numbers. Okay, so let's start with carbon-12. What is this carbon-12 and where is this being used? Carbon-12 is used in absolute dating to determine the age of objects in years. For example, rocks. Okay, so class, you are well aware of carbon dating, right? Okay, so you have there the absolute dating uh, to determine the age of objects in years, specifically the different rocks. So that's carbon-12. Let's proceed to carbon-13. Where is carbon-13 used? So carbon-13 basically is used in organic chemistry research, studies into molecular structures, metabolism, food labeling, air pollution, and climate change. So it has a lot of uses. Um, consequently, it is also used in breath tests. Okay, so uh, in certain conditions class like stomach ulcer, to determine the presence of the causative agent of stomach ulcer, which is helicobacter pylori bacteria, clinicians or doctors and nurses are um, having these breath tests. So in that breath tests, they are using carbon-13. Imagine that class, clinicians testing your breath <laughs> with the presence of um, Helicobacter pylori bacteria, especially if you're suffering from stomach ulcer. Oh, just by the way, just good to know, we have two kinds of stomach ulcer. So that's gastric, gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer. Just good to know. All right, and uh, we have the third isotope of carbon, carbon-14. So where is carbon-14 being used? Okay, so just like the other isotopes, carbon-14 is also radioactive in nature. So it is also used in radiocarbon dating and radio labeling. In nuclear medicine, this is useful in studying abnormalities of metabolism and underlying diseases like diabetes mellitus, gout, anemia, and acromegaly. So see that class? There's a lot of applications of the different isotopes of different elements. So um, we have hundreds of elements in our periodic table of elements, and uh, each of them have their own isotopes. But we can't like specify them one by one. We would be lacking in time. So that's why we ha just have to recognize the common isotopes and their significance or uses. Okay, that's it for today, class. I hope you learned something in this session. Thanks for your time.